My name is Tal Ibrahim. I'm an agricultural engineer, an innovator, and a refugee. Since I was six years old, I have lived with my family in the Sahara refugee camps in Algeria, a barren desert where sandstorms exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit and drop below 32 in the winter. It nearly never rains. The soil is eroded and not fertile, water is scarce. All those conditions don't favor any kind of agricultural production, which led to the almost total dependence of my people on food aid from the international community for more than 40 years. And despite that, my community faces serious nutrition and health challenges that also impacts our future. The Sahrawi traditional kitchen is based on milk and meat, and even today, livestock plays an important role for refugee families. However, as no grass can grow naturally in this desert environment, often the possibility to feed these animals is with garbage or food leftovers, which leads to poor quality and quantity of milk and meat. Knowing that traditional agriculture is not the solution made me look for alternatives to feed the animals. A system that saves water, time, money, space, and efforts. An American friend of mine sent me a YouTube video about high-tech hydroponics, which allows us to grow fresh fodder without soil, using 90% less water, no fertilizers, in only a few days. I was visited by a United Nations World Food, World Food Program colleague who asked for innovative project ideas to help the refugees produce any kind of fresh food. She came at the right time to find the right solution to test the possibility of producing fresh fodder in the camps. WFP Algeria, the WFP Innovation Accelerator in Munich, and Oxfam came together to test Ichu Grow Hydroponics in the camps. We started our pilot with high-tech units that run on solar power and cost 40,000 US dollars each and produced 100 kilograms of fresh fodder a day, enough for 33 animals. It was obvious that high-tech units are not the solution but they inspired me to develop a local solution, low-tech hydroponics. While we managed to bring the cost of the low-tech units to just 10%, the, product the productivity is still at 60% in comparison to the original high-tech version. So what are the advantages of the low-tech units? They are cheap, built with local materials, easy to use, easy to repair, and easy to replicate. With time, we develop different types of low-tech units, always keeping in mind the specific needs of the refugees and the context. Now we have over 250 units in different variations and sizes. It has become a project that's created by refugees, implemented by refugees, and benefits refugees. Over 1,200 refugees were trained on how to use the units. Hundreds of families are now able to produce fresh fodder, ensuring better health of the livestock, and therefore better quality of milk and meat for their families. What I was thinking could be a solution for my own animals has become a solution for a whole community and even other communities. Since anything that can be adapted to these extreme conditions can be easily replicated elsewhere in the world. In the last two years, I have worked with WFP to replicate and adapt H2 Grow Hydroponics to different locations and contexts such as the refugee camps in Jordan, Chad, Sudan, and Kenya, or schools in Namibia. 
In fact, some great knowledge sharing happened from refugee to refugee on how to adapt and how to adapt this technology to local conditions and make it accessible to local people. I am convinced that H2 Grow can be a solution for many more communities around the world who are facing increasingly difficult conditions created by climate change, such as desertification. Hydroponics works not only because it's a good technique, but more importantly because it allows people to become part of their own solution. Today we are at the SDG Action Zone. You have the power to, to create transformative change like this has done for me and my community. Thank you very much.